I'm going to tighten the colours of a fly called the Bebio. The Bebio is a palmered traditional sort of bob fly, wet fly. But the Bebio is tied in all lots of styles. This is just another one, but this is certainly worth having in your box. And this is why I'm showing you it. So basically you can tie them. This is a size 10. It's a B175 size 10. And this is as big as I would tie them. And basically tie them 12s, 14s, whatever you can. And they'll still work, and they'll catch wild trout, and they'll catch rainbows. Great competition fly, a great style for competitions, because it gives the impression of two or three, two or three flies on the water. The thread I'm using is a uni thread in black, an 8-0. I'm just going to start at the eye of the hook, and then work my way down. I'm going to stop just slightly short of the barb. And then I'm going to tie in the tail, just about there. Just remove the waist piece. This is a dyed black, it's a Chinese hackle, cock hackle. And all I'm going to do is pull the fibres, what I need, out 90 degrees from the stem. And that naturally lines the tips up. So what I do is come in and pinch them away. And then length, so length of the body. And then I'm going to do a turn heading down the shank. At least a turn or two anyway, to in line with the point of the hook, or the barb of the hook, sorry. And then cut away the excess. This basically just gets everything in proportion and in line. I'm more likely to go right down to the barb in this style, this colour combination, than stop, like some flies in the dial back series. So you can stop at the point, or in between, but you want to see the body in this fly because of the colours. Now the rib is a, a fine silver wire. Again this goes with the traditional fly. It's a silver rib that's normally on them. Now all I'm doing is catching it, pull into the body with a single turn just to hold. Then I'm going to get two, two lengths of the peacock kettle dyed black. And we tie it in, in by the tip, close to the tip anyway. It's a single loose turn down, pull it in, this point here, and then take up about a third, nice and tight. And the reason I'm doing what I'm doing here is keeping everything nice and basically as slim as possible, I'm not building up too much. And then trim away the excess of the peacock hero. Now the hero is the weakest fibre. The wire is going to protect the body and that's going to go up the same way I wind the thread. But so it catches in more of the fibre, I'm going to wind the herald the opposite way. Up, oh, as I said, about a third or so. There you go. And all you do is come across it, do a single turn, and then a turn onto the hook. Again, that there locks it in. Now you could leave it just now, because we can carry on up with the red, bringing this up with us, and then using this to finish it off. Now, this is bleached and dyed peacock herald, dyed red. Now I need a couple of strands. Now I got that off eBay, so have a search on eBay, you should be able to find it. And I'm sure Vineyard do it as well. So any company that sells Vineyard materials should be able to help you. And then you just catch them in again, close to the tip, take it up that third. And you can break these away. Again, wind the, the red hair all the opposite way. Now I'm going to slightly build it up. Basically what it does is obviously it helps keep it a deep red. So I'm going back up and then back down and helps to form a, a taper. Now I'm just zigzagging across a couple of times and then I'm going to encourage it to go up. At this point, this is your, your original piece of or two peacock curls dye black. Just draw them back and then carry on up the rest of the body. This point here and you can break these off. And again, wind the herald the opposite way. You wind your thread. Just come up. And your rib, which is, as I said, it's going to hold it much better if you do it this way. Two or three turns, or crisscross turns to hold it. Now, you might find this a wee bit heavy, a wee bit thick. Now, you can come in and put a slight taper into the body. You can cut herald. And I especially like to cut it with a slight taper at the back. 
just got to be careful. All the way around. Just cutting at a slight angle with the scissors. Just blow away any cut, it. cut ends. And that should do it. See, you've got a nice, reasonable taper. And then bring your wire up, as I say, the normal way. You're looking for a turn or two, at least, through each section. So it's cutting as much fibre as possible, or as much of the hair roll. And then just bring the wire to the front. 90 degree bend into it. And catch it down. Just going to take the thread to the eye. Simply bend and break it off. Much stronger if you do that. And have a look at the, the body. Because at this point, if you're not happy with it, you can come in and trim it. Which I like doing with Herald. Just slightly trim it. Just get a nicer shape when it's wet. There's a couple that I don't like. To be honest with you, I don't think the fish will be too fussy, but just... It's your fly, you can do what you like. Now you want a, a throat. Same again. Dyed black Chinese. Cock fibres. It's tied underneath. Now you could t take the hook off the vise. And just catch it in. Or you could learn to pinch and loop up the way. Now there's the length you want, length of the body or so. And the first thing I'm going to bring the thread back up. Again, make sure you've got wax on your thread. Gives you a wee bit extra grip. And there's your length. Hold basically the fibres on your finger and thumb. Take the thread in, pinch the thread, bring your thread up. Keeping the finger and thumb close to the shank. Just do that pinch and loop effect. And as you see, it, it sits the fibres in. Now, I'm just going to be quick look. Now, they're, they're touched too long. So what I'm going to do is just come in. It's quite easy. And then pull these in to the length that you like. And that's a better length. And then you'll have to tighten up with two or three more turns. And then come in with... Now, you need the sharp scissors. Now, I'm using my finger here to push away the thread, hopefully. And then come in with the scissors. Trim away the the waist, the cock fibres, take the thread down to the eye, again make sure you put wax on your thread. Now you could finish it that, now that's a ideal dial back, black dial back, or bibule. Now I'm going to put a wee bit of highlights on it, this is a split jungle cock, jungle cock eye. Now it's only split so far so I'm going to encourage it right down to the, to the basically the black area. Just split it a wee bit further, and then we take away what I don't need, and then basically look at the length you would like. And I'm looking at the first, this, the black area at the, the on the body, just where to put the the eyes. And I'm going to force jungle cock, or split jungle cock, down either side. Just get it to to go. Needs a wee bit more encouragement, just doesn't want to do it. There you go. Sometimes you've got to split it a wee bit further down, see that's better. And then you just come in, get them to sit the way you like, and I like them along the body. So what I'll do is I'll come in, hold it, hold the eyes, for a couple of turns, just check and see where they're sitting. If you're happy, which I am, and you can go down, you can fold this back if you want. But there's plenty of room there to tie this in. I have left plenty of room. Because of that, I'm actually going to add something else. I'm going to add a, a small red holographic. This is a deep red stuff. This is the original Madeira. It's a spool of Madeira, uh, basically metallic, or they call it metallic if I remember right. But it's red holographic. And it's a really deep red. It's nice. If you can find a spool of that, then it's certainly worth having for your flies. It's good on the... There's a fly called the Nemo, and there's some other dial bass that work extremely well. And crunchers. But anyway, I've got it all the way up. Now remember, I've waxed the thread, so there's... It allows, when you wind this to put on the head, it gives it a bit more grip. Now you don't have to worry too much about it. It could be a wee space in it. But once you, once you actually varnish the head, you don't see it 
you still got the glint of the red, which is fine. Now, what I'm going to do here is I've cut it with a single turn, and then I'm going to fold it back, bring the thread in front of it, just forget it just now, and then I'm going to whip finish to save. I don't want to cover up the red holographic. I only want to be able to catch it on, and then put two or three turns of whip finish in, and then trim away. It's a bit silly putting it on and then covering it up with your thread. So if you can do that, just remember that obviously you're going to you're going to varnish this. Now a good shiny head, which I like, is to put some super glue on first. Yeah, all I do is touch it. I don't want it running onto any of the the fibers or anywhere. Now you'll see I've reduced the brush on the the super glue. Now it's a bigger brush than that. I've cut it. Now you can see it. What a good. There's only about maybe a, a fifth of the brush left. And it makes it easier to apply them the super glue. Now that that basically seals, goes rock hard, and then I can varnish over the top of it, which seals the super glue, and it stops it going white. People recognise that when they use super glue, sometimes it goes white. Now it's called blooming. It's the activator for super glue is moisture. So the longer it takes to basically set, the more moisture it attracts, and that builds up and makes it go white. So basically what I do is fresh stuff, it's brand new, so it sets real quick and then it should be ready to varnish over it, which seals it. And you'll have one of the hardest heads that you could ever you could ever want. And really shiny. Now I'm, again I'm applying it with a brush, which is just a nail, a nail varnish bottle, but the varnish inside it is veneers varnish, just clear veneers varnish. But anyway, there we go. That there's your, basically your Bibio Dal Bach, a great, a really good fly, good pattern to have in your box, and especially if you're into the competitions. And it does give a few, a different, I'll give an impression of a few patterns on the water, but give it a go, see how you get on. And that's your Bibio Dal Bach.